the KQI2 is a $600 commuter-oriented electric scooter from NIU, NIU. If you haven't heard of this company, it's because they've been focused elsewhere on the PEV market, with over 2 million e-mopeds and e-bikes on the streets all over the world. They've even partnered with companies like Revel and Lime to build their fleets of rideshare vehicles. With that kind of experience in producing EVs, will their latest foray into the electric kick scooter category with the KQI2 be worth your money? To test the KQI2, Alex in Wenzhou was my henchman of choice this time, with Max still enjoying his lockdown vacation in Shanghai. He weighs 93 kilograms and the weather was 21 degrees Celsius at the time of testing. All the tests were done in the highest riding mode. Sporting a 48 volt, 365 watt hour battery, new estimates you'll get up to 40 kilometers of range on a single charge with a top speed of 28 kilometers per hour. Alex rode 31 kilometers before the battery died, averaging 25 kilometers per hour and topping out at 28 kilometers per hour. Alex noted that the KQI2 felt like it still had more to give, but was somehow artificially limited. New says this is to comply with local laws and regulations. The battery charges from empty to full in about 7 hours with the included 1.3 amp charger. The KQI2 is driven by a single rear hub motor rated for 300 watts continuous and 600 watts peak. To actually start accelerating, the rider has to give it a push as sort of a safety feature. But your preference may vary and I'd prefer there was an option to toggle this on or off. The acceleration feels smooth and in spite of the modest wattage, the KQI2 should be able to handle up to 10% grade inclines for the average rider. With Alex at the wheel, the KQI2 struggled slightly with steeper inclines, slowing down but ultimately ultimately making it to the top. So for anyone over Alex's weight, you might want to look for something with more power. The tires are pneumatic and tubeless, measuring 254 by 58 millimeters, or 10 by 2.3 inches in diameter. Tubeless tires are awesome as they've got increased pinch flat resistance while retaining the comfiness of a pneumatic ride. They're decently large for a scooter in this category, compared to something like the popular Xiaomi M365 Pro, which has smaller 8.5 inch tires. A couple pro tips with tubeless tires. Lower the tire pressure to 20 to 30% below the max PSI rating. It'll increase the ride quality and puncture resistance with a negligible loss in range. If you're confident in your handiness, get a bottle of tire sealant and fill the tires with it, according to the manufacturer's spec, for even more puncture protection. The brakes on the KQI2 are activated by a single lever on the left side of the handlebar. That lever controls a front drum brake and regenerative rear brake. Drum brakes generally require less maintenance and are less affected by the elements at the cost of braking power. It's not going to outperform a disc brake setup, but still had decent enough stopping power for Alex who weighs 93 kilograms. The KQI2 has a clean minimalist look and it's where New flexes their PEV experience with the well thought out aesthetic and mechanical design. With 520mm wide handlebars and a 15 degree front rake, the KQI2 is going to feel quite a bit more stable than many other commuter scooters which often sport 400 to 450mm handlebars or a more upright front. The cockpit configuration is fairly minimal, only displaying your current speed, battery life, and riding mode. Changing ride modes and toggling the lights are done through a single power button below the display. To check stuff like odometry and customize each ride mode, there's a mobile app that you can connect to with Bluetooth. The display is mostly bright enough to read in direct sunlight and increases in brightness when the front light is turned off. Speaking of lights, the KQI2 is equipped with a front main light and a rear brake light. The front light can be toggled with a double tap on the power button. The angle is adjustable and has an always on ring for better rider visibility. New also included front and side reflectors for even more visibility to drivers and pedestrians. The deck is covered with replaceable grip tape and has a width of 133 millimeters with enough room to ride with your feet one behind another but not side by side. In length there's about 500 millimeters of standing area, more or less the same as other scooters in this category. Note that you cannot brace your foot against the rear fender. Wire management is top notch with only two visible cables around the handlebar, with the rest of them routed through the frame. Other than the clean AF look, it also helps with the IP54 rating for water resistance, with front and rear splash guards to keep your pants and kicks fresh. If this video has been helpful so far, do me a favor and hit the like button. There's a couple more features that can be accessed through the new app, like smart lock and unlock and customizing each of the four riding modes. The UI looks polished and user-friendly, which is always a nice thing. 
You can view write info like the battery capacity remaining, past writing routes, and even total charge cycles for the battery. Undoing the stem latch enables the KQI2 to be folded up. But weighing in at 18 kilograms, it's not something I carry around for more than a few minutes. The KQI2 has one of the longest warranty periods of any PEV I've reviewed, with the frame and electronics covered by new for two whole years. Mechanical parts like the brake levers and throttle are covered for six months, while even consumables like tires are covered for three months. Seems like New's extensive PEV manufacturing experience has given them the confidence to completely outspec their competition, who mostly offer three to six month limited warranties. Even the ever popular Xiaomi M365 comes with just a limited one year warranty. The market for e-scooters priced around half a grand has been dominated by the Xiaomi M365 for a long time, and for many of the same reasons that make the KQI2 a great scooter. The KQI2 has one of the longest warranty periods of any PEV I've reviewed, with the frame and electronics covered right new for two whole years. Mechanical parts like the brake levers and throttle are covered for six months, while even consumables like tires are covered for three months. With specs comparable to some of the best scooters in the price range, a solid background in producing personal electric vehicles, and a two-year warranty covering the most expensive parts, the KQI2 may shape up to be the best electric scooter you can buy at this price point. The only major downside being its weight, which is a few kilograms more than its nearest competitor. So if you're looking for an all-around scooter that's one step up from the entry-level scooters, the KQI2 is for sure worth checking out. If you're interested in getting a new KQI2 for yourself, check out the video description to find out how to get the best deal.